and the last time we were out here was a couple of years ago and it was so new for everybody like can you even think back of how far the program's come in terms of you know, the guys who have been through it. every single day yeah. um just seeing now you watch the guys who have been here for a couple of years and guys who may have struggled in year one and you know tour duty is a different thing I don't care who you are, I don't care what level you are, it takes a year to kind of get your feet under you and mentally get your head wrapped around what tour duties are throw at you. And you see the guys, you see the growth, guys who maybe you saw struggle when you came out two years ago and watched. And you see those guys leading groups and excelling now because they've been in the program and not just being in better shape or anything else, but being mentally tougher, mentally stronger to be able to be those guys who are now ascended to those leadership type roles. You kind of said it, but how important is it when it becomes player-led? Obviously, first year it's coach-led because everyone's next year is a little bit, but now you have the players teaching the younger players and they're That's the ones. That's immeasurable. I mean, ultimately, you'd like your, your program to be coach-fed and player-led. You know, let us steer it the right direction. Let us provide coaching where it's appropriate when it comes to leadership and those types of things. And let the guys lead. Let the guys drive. Let the guys pick their peers up. Because it means way more coming from the guy that you rode to the workouts with that you live with than it ever does coming from a coach who did this forever ago. Right? And you see that start to happen. You guys watch around. You see those guys coaching the things that we used to coach. I find myself coaching less of the basic standard stuff and being able to coach leadership and things like that. That's when you start to truly measure growth for the program. Are there any guys that have just brought it consistently beginning to end throughout all four games? Yeah, that's a long, that's a long list. Um, the guy, the guys really, like you want to talk about like, some individuals in the offseason, I want to talk about guys like Josh Burrell, Dennis Briggs, Thomas Schrader, guys who battle back off of injury. Uh, Byron Turner's one of those guys. See what those guys are able to do this offseason through the rehab process, transition from rehab process, get very close to back playing ball again. See what those guys have done. Those are the guys that have had some remarkable winning programs this year. Last year, you guys talked about guys like Jay Sean Corbin, uh, Darius Washington, who had really good tour duties, and that translated over to the, the season. Mm -hmm. How transferable is tour duty typically to, to what you see on the field? It, it, it's, it's huge in the sense of this. Like, anything you want to get better. Okay, so let's say a guy wants to be a better squatter. What's that take? It takes reps and it takes time. Light reps become moderately heavy reps. Moderately heavy reps become heavy reps. Heavy reps become the strongest you've ever been. Leadership's no different, right? If I can lead a guy in a little small moment to her duty, the way now I can lead him in a little bit bigger moment. And that will gradually build through spring ball, through summer workouts, through camp, till eventually when you're out there in dope with 80,000 people out there and you're between the white lines, and you can lead in that big, heavy moment to be your best because you've built those reps over the course of the year. And that starts right now with tour duty. That's why we start the winter program with tour duty. Because this is your time of year, you go through a leadership void, right? All those guys that you just mentioned are all gone. Those are the guys who are leaders. Okay, so now who leads? Well, you got guys who want to lead, guys who've been growing towards being leaders, but they haven't actually done it yet. Or they've done it in a small role, and now they're ready for that bigger stage. And that's why we start with Tour Duty. Tour Duty provides ample opportunity for those guys to step up and take hold of those moments. Between tra transfers and freshmen, you have about 20 new guys. How have those guys handled this as they've gotten It's been good. So, I mean, if you look at the team this year, with 109 guys in the roster right now, I believe 45 or 46 guys, this is their very first winter program. So it's not just the mid-year new guys of the early enrollees and the transfer guys. It's also guys who came last summer who this is their first offseason. So as you walk out there right down today, you watch the whole thing going. Really, you look at almost 50% as Brett guys who brand new their first tour of duty was seven weeks ago. And so you see the growth of those guys. Some guys come in very ready. Some guys go through young guy stuff. But once again, whether you're a transfer guy or an early enrollee freshman, tour duty is a different deal, right? And the, the mental things that throws at you, the added anxiety of not just your teammates being there, but your coaches, the head coach, your coordinator, the guys that control your playing time, that creates a, a, a sense of anxiety and some mental pressure that you can't create in any other workout, which is why it's important for those guys. It gives you a really good idea. If a guy can handle this really well, this guy can probably take a little bit of pressure in spring ball too which will travel over to what? To summer and then to camp and what? What did you hear from some of the transfers? I think I heard to the, from early in the semester just how intense they weren't ready for the intensity of it. It was a little different than what they kind of uh, used Yeah, there's to. no doubt. I mean, we, we talk about uh, all the time, like, like our guys are coming here to be built different. We're going to ask different things of our guys. I think the biggest thing that surprises them, it's not just that it's hard, it's the consistency of it. It's every day that she's coming in waves, coming in waves, coming in waves. It's not like maybe the place you're at before, you had one or two of those really hard days throughout the winter time and everybody made a big deal about it. Here, when they come here, they realize it's Monday, it's Tuesday, it's Wednesday, it's Thursday, it's Friday, it's again next week, the next week, the next week. That's the biggest surprise to guys, but that's also where you see the progress is in that consistency. If there's one thing, one thing we teach these young men that come to the program is the importance of consistency, not just how you work, but how you show up to work every single day. How do you guys have coaching? Hey, you got it. 
So you had a couple guys shift from off field to being on field coaches for you guys, but you've had a continuity with staff mm -hmm. in the last year. How does that help you organize this whole program when you've got that continuity? Like it's huge. you got guys who've seen it before. You know, and you see with a couple of the, of the coaches that are new into the program, they're out there still kind of wide-eyed, seeing how the whole thing operates. you got some of us, I mean, this year, Coach, and I've been together 10 years. I've done a whole lot of tour duties. So, like, I'll, I'll try to, you know, grab those guys, help them get on top of their role, be great at that role, and then expand. you got some guys that, once again, who are off-field, who've seen it happen for a couple of years, who are now that guy that's up in the mix and whatnot. And that's a transition, too, because it does. It, it's, it moves fast, it's loud, there's a lot of moving parts, and so is practice. Besides the conditioning part, how much are inside of coaches getting to how competitive young guys are and things like that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun watching those guys come in, step up, seeing, seeing you know, you, know you, you, you watch a kid on tape in the evaluation process, you kind of fall in love with them during recruiting, but they get to see them show up and actually what do they bring to the table day one coming in, and that, that's huge. That's one of the most exciting parts about this time of year, especially the way college football has changed. And now, you, you know, pretty much you bring in your entire freshman class mid-year. And for those guys, that's, that's infinitely important because now they're getting an entire extra off-season. They're going to get a whole summer program. By the time camp rolls around, yeah, they haven't been out there in that stadium yet for real, but they've been in the program almost a year at that point. It's a lot of work, a lot of trade, a lot of familiarity under their belt by the time they get to that point. So it sets those guys ahead for their careers, especially in a class like this where you have a lot of bigs. The extra off-season for, for a young front seven type player is huge. One guy who looked a lot different from the last time I saw him is Derek Blendon. I guess what kind of work has he put in He's done a good job being consistent. I mean, we, when we got here, d was a really young guy, you know, and just the maturity, not just of his body, but of his mindset as well. And you see that start to pay off. Like we talk about the consistency over time. And if you give yourself into that and you buy into what that's going to bring you, if you can come to work the right day every day, you start seeing a guy like d where that can take you over time. What kind of impression has Jared Burks made on you so far? I mean, it's kind of stood out to yeah, Jerry's been a stud, um, super mature kid. Um, that stood out right away in the recruiting process when he came in. Like as you're talking to him, he was he's like talking to one of our veteran guys. Even though he always been in college for you know, two years or whatnot, you know, very, very different path that took him to, to, to bring him here. But you see him step in, being a being an older guy, the way he carries himself, guys kind of look to him. Because obviously, I mean you guys watch him around physically, that dude's he's a certified freak of nature, right? So that always buys you a little bit of street credibility. But then when you see him, the consistency, you see that he can come into a program as a new guy, conduct himself as a professional conduct himself as a guy that's been around, a guy that doesn't need to be taught the standards, a guy that just knows how to step in and be a pro. Well, that's huge. That sets him ahead to be a guy that young guys can look at to see how to do it. And then also, too, for old guys, you know what I'm saying? I mean, saying since forever is iron sharpens iron. It's great. You want to bring in highly talented guys to push your existing talents as well. And then on the other side, Paul, uh, Wiles, uh, what does he do for you over there in the weight room? You have a guy like that in there. What does he do for you? Yeah, I mean, I mean in, in all areas, you got a guy like like Caden, who's, who's once again, he's he's an he's an older presence, okay. So he can take those young guys. You know, you, you see him pull a guy like Bryce and Estes in. You see those guys spend a lot of time, okay. So not just as, is Caden doing a great job developing himself physically, learning the system, those things. You're watching him actively for a guy that just got here, making young guys better as well. And so like the impact that he's having this program isn't going to be just this year on the field. You see the impact that Caden has for years to come with what those young old linemen become, with some of the leadership that's in that room, and he's a big part of that. Another guy that seemed to miss time last year, but seems like he's doing well, Renardo Green. Yeah. How far is he? Once again, it's a guy who went through a long rehab process coming off that deal last year. Um, a guy who, who's been who's been at his very best. Like he's had moments since we've been here where he's been a really, really high performer. He's had some times where he's gone through some hard through some hard times, some ups and downs. And this winter program, he's been consistently at the highest he's been. It's been really fun to watch, seeing him grow, not just physically, but in what he's becoming around the guys and the way he can show up every day. And that's a that's a deal where like you see that happen out here, and that's only you can only measure that you know in a squad or a bench or whatever, but where you see it is when it pays off in the field. And that's stuff that, like, you see it growing over the course of a winter program, all those, like, intangible type things, right? And you see, like, that matters. I can't measure that. I can't quantify that, but that matters. And that is a lot of what you're seeing this winter, along with the physical growth. Like, that's a that's a standard, right? Like, that's, that's I can dictate that. The other growth, we got to set the table for that, but the guys have to be the ones to do that or see that happen. How was the squad party? Awesome. It's, it's hectic, and it's a lot of stuff going on. Loud, a lot of action, um, a lot of guys. So, I mean, that environment's huge. You know, we talk about it all the time. Like, yeah, I mean, it's just you went to the bar, but like, you got that environment, that room, you got your brothers around to help you to help you lift that weight just from the, the the moment and the environment, getting caught up in it, seeing guys perform, you see the competitive spirit come out. And that, 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 that's a big deal for our program. Like, you see guys, it's like one of the few days I lot phones and stuff in the weight room when we're training. And so, you'll see, you know, Amari Gaynor's on FaceTime with somebody. I see who's on FaceTime with. 
he's FaceTiming with Jermaine because Jermaine wants to see what our guys are up to. You know, you see guys, you know, former players, former players want to check in. Guys texting me on Friday, they want to know what time the squad party was starting. Guys are out training for the combine and stuff right now. And that's cool. It just goes to show you the impact that work can have on the program. It's not everything, but it's, it's it matters. Have you seen many receivers like Josh, Josh Burrell in, in, with the squad? In, in no, J Josh is an elite squad. I mean, he truly, he truly is. We look, you look at the way he's built. Uh, the it takes it takes a mature mindset to be able to move weight like that. You can't just move weight like that with a a young, immature mindset. So, like seeing that out of him, like that kid's got bright stuff, bright future to come. And he's one of those guys too that we haven't got to see a lot of yet. Coming to Byron Turner, you know, Byron Turner's got to hit a huge squad on Friday as well. But he was a guy that came in with a pre-existing deal that we had to get taken care of, and seeing him grow for this offseason as well. So there's gonna be some some. Some fun things are going to be set on this field that you guys haven't got a chance to really see very much of yet. Talk about the squad party. I know this is the first full offseason with the renovated weight room. I guess how much of a difference does that make for y'all? Oh, the, the efficiency that brings to what we do is, is huge. You know, I mean, the equipment that was there before, like, it's fine. I mean, you can get strong on any rack, right? But I mean, at the end of the day, when you walk in there, like, you've got a room that feels like it's giving back to the kids, where the kids put it in that room. Right, and then just from an efficiency and safety standpoint, that's that's huge for us. You know, just with some of the, some of the uh, unique things that Soar Next equipment brings to the room allows us to do some things differently than we've done in the past. You know, a little bit quicker, a little bit more efficient, a little bit safer, in obviously a far better looking space than what was in the first night. Anything else? Is this the last kind of this kind of thing before spring practice starts? Or is it... Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll, we'll still have a big training day tomorrow. Okay, we'll be back out here again on Thursday. Um, there's been a little bit of a modified version of this as we're kind of getting ready for, for practice on Saturday. Uh, Friday will be kind of our last, kind of more of a recovery, mobility, kind of help these guys start getting their legs back on it for Saturday and we'll be off spring ball and we'll Hey guys, this is Logan. Definitely appreciate you for watching the entire video. If you wouldn't mind, definitely hit that like button down below. Leave a comment on what you thought about the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you guys haven't yet either, make sure you're signed up on our Patreon. This is where we're giving our inside news, inside nuggets, recruiting scoop, and so much more daily. You guys can sign up for that at patreon.com slash no game day. It's the cheapest option out of any outlet covering Florida State Athletics right now at $2.99 a month. I highly suggest going to check it out. Once again, patreon.com slash no game day. Come hang out with us and get ready for the season ahead. See you guys there, and thank you for watching.